I'm Katrina, this is So and Tear, and this is part two of this year's grafting video. So this is grafting knife. We discuss all the grafting uh, materials and reasonings and what needs to happen in part one. So if you have not seen that, go to this video right here, watch that one first, then come to this one, uh, because we wanna make sure you know the background, but it was getting long, so I decided to cut it short. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go over here to this um, rootstock that I'm using. I am going to graft the Silk Road Nectarine first, and we'll do a couple of these. Um, I have multiple to do, so I'll probably film all of them and show you a couple of them. <laughs> all right, we have our, this is a prune, a prunus, sorry. This is a plum um, rootstock. You can see when they when they grew it. Maybe you gotta turn it. You can see when they grew it, it grew like this, and then they chose this branch to grow up. And you can choose, I mean they could have chosen any of these. Um, any of these little nodes will start some growth. So what we wanna do is we wanna cut the the rootstock flat. And I'm gonna cut it somewhere in here. And we're going to cut this flat and I'm going to cut it right below a bud because that's where the energy is. So I'm going to cut it right below the bud. That's where the energy will come out at a bud, right? They're coming out at the buds. So that will give that energy. There we go. So now that's flat. When you hold your grafting stuff, Again, I am right-handed, this is a right-handed knife. I'm holding it out. You guys see what's pointing towards you? The back of the knife is pointing towards you. The sharp part is pointing towards me. What? Knife safety, guys, come on. You want the knife to face towards you. And the reason is, the knife faces towards you, this side of the blade is the flat side. When you go like this, and go like this, that knife will then go um, flat against this and, and out. So you do it this way, you're not going to cut yourself and you won't have that concern. If you have concerns, wear cut, cut resistant gloves. Um, you can practice on these. I recommend you do practice on these several times. You know, don't practice on the variety that you want to use. Practice on some stick from a tree that's about the same same diameter as what you want to use. What I'm going to do is to choose an area on here. And I'm going to, can see there's a bud going this way and and there's a bud going this way I'm going to cut right here and then on the back side right here so I'm gonna cut this side and then this side and so we don't go through we don't need to cut through a um, a bud if you're cutting through a bud, it just means it's harder to get it straight. It's kind of like if you use a saw and you, you saw through a knot in wood, it's like that. So I'm gonna do this and my goal here is not to get something straight here and straight here. I'm gonna make a straight cut and then I'll turn it over, back it off just a little bit so that this other cut, I'm gonna make a straight cut, but the cuts won't be parallel to each other. They, I'm gonna over exaggerate my hands here. They're gonna be like that. Doesn't have to be that dramatic. But here's one cut and here's one cut if this is the branch. And what that does is we're gonna put the small cut in the middle or closer and we'll line up the bigger cut on the outside. And that, when we do that, we're able to close it, um, close the rootstock more around that. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> um, for most of your trees, I believe kiwi is the only one that I know is different. If you look at this stick, that is up. See how all of these are pointing up? All of the buds are pointing up? That is up. This is down. So you want to make sure you're cutting and grafting in the right direction. 
I have heard that it does work if you graph in the wrong direction. It just has to grow down before it goes up again. Let's try not to make that mistake. All right, so now we know that we're going to be cutting kind of a trapezoidal shape, kind of, I'm gonna call it that, and, and the reason why. Next, we want to also taper in this direction, right? We want tapered in this direction as well. And the reason for that is this is basically a wedge going into a rootstock and we're going to wedge it in there, tape it together, and you're literally cutting and pasting a tree, guys. <laughs> Cut and paste. A stick this size will give you multiple trees. Um, you only really need one bud to work, so keep two buds and one of those will form the tree. Um, so you can use more than, you can use this for more than one tree. So the way it was explained to me is that this is caveman style, okay? So again, we have a knife in our fist facing ourselves, okay? Facing ourselves. And it's in our fist. We're not holding it like this. We're not holding it like this. Pinky up, no. We are holding it in our hand like we're gonna bang on the table with, with our forks and knives and say, where's dinner? <laughs> okay, same thing with this. We want to grab it in our other hand. Make sure the, the buds are facing your hand. So you see that? The buds are facing my hand, right? This is upside, this is downside. So that makes sense. Okay, next is how do we actually do the motion? This is where your practice comes in and you know, practice makes perfect, but it's not always gonna be perfect. So we have a couple tries on this, but I want the first try to be good enough because I only have one of these through socks. I should have gotten two of these now that I think of it, but I only have one. So um, we want this to be successful. It's one smooth cut. So you want one smooth cut. We don't wanna have to trim it up, right? You trim it up, that's like having jagged edges. And what we're really going for is a flat edge against a flat edge. So they just match up completely. And so that's the goal. That's again why you don't want a double beveled, which is a normal knife, is because instead of it being flat, it will actually have curve to it, and you know, it won't um, be touching as readily. So, uh, next is how do you do it? I've had orchardists tell me two ways of doing this, and both of them work, and both of them are safe. So one way, the first way that I learned was you hold this in your hand, again, caveman style with the blade, with the blade facing your face, right? Hold it here, angled, hold this, and move this arm only, okay? There is no harm that's gonna befall you from cutting yourself if you don't move your cutting hand, <laughs> okay? You gotta be really talented to do that. So that is one, is to keep this still and then only do one swift motion with this, turn it around, do one swift motion. Another one that I learned more recently is to actually use both and pull out. And that actually worked pretty well. I find that my cuts were more consistent that way. Practice both and see what works for you. Um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to like be whittling through. We want one smooth cut and then that's that's the process. So um, I am going to be going doing this motion and again this this coming up. So I don't know, I think it's kind of more like this, but but um, you're what you're doing is you're actually tightening your back muscles and especially for someone who is maybe more weak in the arms, that method works better because you're using your whole arm. You're using your shoulder and your back to do this motion. So it's kind of like a fly, right? You're doing flies. Um, what lifting weights is what I'm referencing in case anybody's missing that. I just realized probably not a lot of gardeners are also weightlifters. <laughs> maybe, maybe we left, I mean, we left different things that are heavy. 
anyway, so I think that's the background I'm gonna give. I'll show you what it looks like, and then the next one I do, I will show you kind of down, or close, I don't know, close up here. But um, I'll show you more cl closed in on this. That's the basics. We're already 12 minutes into the video, so <laughs> this is why I wanted to be a multi multiple part. All right, so we're holding it both out. I know where I'm gonna cut here. Another thing to do is to, if you cut it like this, it's gonna be kind of really hard to do. If you think about, um, okay, I'm gonna relate this to meat and maybe not everybody will understand this, but at least you'll know how to cut meat. <laughs> um, let's say you have a steak and you're wanting to cut it so that it's the most juicy, most you know good way to cut it. What you wanna wanna do is find the muscle fibers so muscle fibers are going this way, then you cut this way. You cut it. You cut a perpendicular to the muscle fibers, and if you cut this way, then those muscle fibers are going to be more chewy. You're going to have more chewy steak if you cut with the with the fiber than against the fiber. So, in this case, if you are cutting this way, you're cutting with the wood fiber. Okay. If you're cutting on an angle, it gets through better. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm finding where I'm going. You look down, you look at your, whoops, you look down, you look at your angle, and then you just go for it. So I have the flat part of the knife against the stick, against the scion. Make sure you guys can see. And I have a caveman style and Okay. Got a flat cut. Okay. Now I'm going to turn that over. And if I were to do a flat cut here, um, I wouldn't have that trapezoidal shape I'm looking for. So I'm going to go a little bit further. And there we go. This is a little bit wide. I like it to be a little skinnier, but it is doing what I want it to do. You see that's thicker than that. You guys see that? I'm actually just gonna use this one. Why not? Why not? So I'm gonna use this and then I should have done this first. Okay. <clears throat> so for this, again, you don't want to cut yourself. Some people put a CD. You guys remember those? You guys remember CDs? Some people put a CD over their hand and hold it and then cut it. You don't need to do that. Your, if your knife is sharp, which it should be, you can put this in the center. And yes, you do want it in the center. Put it in the center and rock it back and forth. You can have you can have this on, you know, pressure on the top. Some people do this and only use the pressure of their thumb. You can do that. I suggest you use a a uh, glove if you do that. But I am just going to rock it back and forth. And it's halfway down the knife. There we go. And there's a reason why you don't want to to put apply too much pressure because if you do, it can just go right through. Again, remember we talked about those fibers. All right, so this goes about that far. We can go an inch, an inch to an inch and a half doing this. And again, I'm not applying that much pressure. I'm just moving it back and forth. All right. So now we want to line it up. Going to clip off the have like a little tail on here. Line it up so that big side is on the outside and the small side is on the inside. All 
All right, I actually need the light. <clears throat> so, remember that we are lining up the layers of the cambium. Oops, that went too far. And the, the layers of the cambium is the inner bark. So you could also have the case where the outer bark is thicker on one or the other um, pieces. So you really want to look at where the inner bark is. I think I got it. I want to tape this up so it doesn't split further and then protect that. And I'm applying a little bit of pressure. Make it go a little further down. And tape it up. Now that one was a little thick. It's gonna work, but a thinner would be better for that. The good thing about both buddy tape and um, the masking tape is that it's biodegradable you, and uh, the shoots grow through it. So I'm just gonna do that. And then I am going to give this a little hat to make sure if it rains or something, um, it'll go down and not in. If you think of shingles, that's always going to happen as you, you want the top part to, you know, be held that way. All right. So I have one here and one bud here. I'm going to, well, I can actually just get this off here too. So I'm going to cut this above here. Give this another little hat. Did way too much, that's okay. And crimp that at the top. There you go. Which might be the first thing you want to do is to write down what it is. Silk Road. And I know that's a nectarine, so I don't really have to write nectarine. And it's good to mark, you can mark it on the container too, but it's good to mark this. And don't expect this to last forever, so write it down somewhere else. You know, put this name somewhere. I'm going to actually mark the container as well. And you have your tree. So, this little tree, give it a chance to grow. <laughs> give it a chance to grow and you'll have fruit and it's gonna be awesome so wish me luck on this one I really really want this variety guys I should have done more than one rootstock but that's okay hopefully it'll grow and do well and be awesome Silk Road Nectarine is this awesome variety that does really really poorly as a sh like it's not shelf stable for very long it it must be eaten or dealt with you know almost immediately and but it's so delicious it's so delicious it's the most delicious nectarine i've ever had so i highly recommend it <laughs> all right let's go on to apples and i will likely only show you kind of clips of the next one of of how to do it because i have i think four apples to do and so i want to make sure i get all that done and 
uh, when I explain things it takes longer to do you guys saw that it takes you know five minutes to do but you know half an hour when you're filming it so next up is dealing with rootstock that get that looks like this so sometimes you get rootstocks and they're already potted up that's what this one was um, if you don't have I put it in a bigger pot but if you don't have one potted up you get them like this um, you can pot them up on your own and what you want to do this is going to be looking silly but all those roots you basically want to cut them off so we're going to cut off within an inch of the um, main trunk and you know oftentimes those roots are going to be damaged anyway but this will make sure oh, look they're growing something already I'm not sure if, I'm not sure what kind of growth that is so I'm going to pick it off um, but you have this and that will grow now I have some potting soil it does have some rabbit manure in the middle I don't put it on top so I don't get flies but I'm going to just make a little hole get this down there and you can put it to the same level that it was at before or you can put it to the same level of like right above where the roots are and that'll be fine hopefully yours hasn't started growing yet you can pinch it off if you if you want to um, I'm actually going to cut this you know right about here and to do these next ones so it doesn't really matter what's growing up here it matters what's growing down here so here's another thing you might run into um, when you go to these places and you label them and then you keep them in a moist bag you're gonna have some things that you can't really read it's a good idea to write these things down when you go there so I have a picture of what this one is it's Hudson's golden something Now I'm going to do an experiment with these because these are apple rootstocks and you, you saw how they came out. It looks like someone just cut it and put it in, in soil. So I am actually saving these and putting them in soil. So I might have rootstocks later. So that's facing myself. Flat edge is going to be facing my body at an angle. Okay. Again, these, the buds are facing upwards towards my hand. So the stick goes like this. It's buds are facing up. That is towards my hand. So these come together. We don't want to go like this. We want to go like this. Also, you don't want to start here. You want to start down at the bottom because you're going to be cutting up. All right, and getting my angle right. I'll show you guys on that on the next one. Actually, I'm going to go around here. When you're doing this, you can have it against the wood like this or you can go like this to find your angle so this is what you're doing kind of hard to get that to film from the top especially since my camera ran out and this is now on the phone <laughs> but that is what the angle is that you're doing and then you are taking it at a an x That didn't go all the way. Typically, you don't want to redo them, but I'm doing it. <laughs> all right, I still got a pretty thick wedge, so I'm actually going to go again. All right, so that is thin. That is thick. I kind of have a wonky end, but I'm just going to cut that end off. Actually, that didn't go on the other end. All right, well, that one's not great either, but we'll go with it. I'm not holding this because it, it's going to sink otherwise. But I'm not applying that much pressure, which is why it's taking, why it takes longer time.
very light pressure with the thumb. There we go. Got that going. Just a rocking back and forth. Very, very lightly. Now, that's the skinny end. This is the fat end. We're going to put the fat end on the outside. Actually, I'm going to do the outside over here. It's easier when they're already rooted. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I'm going to put some tape first because this one is starting to split. When you're taping, you want to try and make sure not to move what you've set. It might be a little hard to do for a beginner. But you can try that. Now that we're there, I'm going to put the top on. And since this was already cut on the... Oh, you guys can't see it there. <clears throat> Since this is already cut here um, and it's healed, you don't need to add the top part. It's only when it's exposed. And there's three buds and that's more than two, but honestly, it's fine. All right, here we go. There's number two. So this hand is guiding and my thumb is the only thing doing just a slight bit of pressure and I'm just rock using this hand to rock back and forth. There's no pressure anything other than my thumb. Yes, you could go faster if you put more pressure. Yes, there's more risk. This one I made a little bit longer. This is kind of better than the other one. This one has a thin end, and then this is the thick end. The thick end goes on the edge. And I'm gonna choose this edge. It looks cleaner. Okay, so you see this is the rootstock, this is the scion, and it's going in. I'm lining it up on this end, not on this end. And, oops. Can I go back up? And I broke it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut that end off. There we go. That's good. So, skinny end goes in the inside, thick end goes on the outside. And, I think in this case I'm gonna let this help me. There we go. So I'm doing this layer of tape down at the bottom to 
make sure it doesn't split all the way down the rootstock. Oops. And then I can apply a little bit more pressure with a scion and make sure it crosses a little bit. Wrap it up. All right, in this case, it's so short, I'm just gonna let it grow. I don't remember, I think I cut the top, so I'm gonna cut it. Put a little hat on it. There we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this gave you the confidence to try. Worst thing will happen is you won't have a live tree. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, best thing that will happen is you'll have amazing fruit. So go ahead and try this. And I encourage everybody, if you love a certain kind of fruit, try and find it, find it, then grow it. Thank you for watching. If you have other grafting tips, if you um, have some other, you know, tips and tricks for how to do these things, there are multiple ways to graft. There are multiple reasons to graft. Um, even if you want to heal a tree that's been struck by lightning. It's crazy. It's crazy. So go ahead and like this if you like the video. Click subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Hit the bell notification, select all, so you get all the content. And I want you guys to go out and garden and graft and grow good things. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.